Hello everyone. Welcome to this ISSC Edu 2020 presentation on capacitive sensor interfaces. I'm Menke Law from the University of Macau. So to briefly introduce myself, my research interests are in ultra-low power CMOS sensing or readout circuits and energy harvesting techniques. I'm a TPC member of ISSC, and this presentation is a reduced version of the ISSC 2020 tutorial. The PDF in this mini tutorial is available in the SSCS Resource Center, and you can also find many other excellent resources there. So to start, capacitive sensors are widely deployed in many areas, including the automotive application, the industrial application, the consumer application, and also the healthcare application. They transduce different physical parameters into a capacitance change, which is read out by the capacitive sensor interface. Even though capacitive sensing is involved in all these systems, the sensing requirements can be very different. So for example, in terms of airbag deployment in a car crash scenario, we are expecting a very high acceleration sensing dynamic range, say up to 100 G while in other general purpose device orientation applications, typically we are talking about a dynamic range in the order of a few G or even less. Some application also requires very high sensing accuracy. For example, in precision platform stabilization, a sub nanometer precision in the measured distance is typically necessary. And depending on the sensor characteristics, this can be translated into a capacitance change in the order of antifarad, which is 10 to the power minus 18, a very small value. The sensing energy can also be a limiting factor during the design stage, like for healthcare or implantable applications, where the energy availability is limited. And in this case, we are expecting a sensing power in the sub microwave level. All these varying system requirements can lead to distinct interface design considerations, making a sensor interface implementation very challenging. So to illustrate more on capacitive sensing and the system requirements, let's study some application examples. So this is a gyroscope for navigation purpose. So you can see two proof masses which are supported by springs here. The x-axis serves as a driving channel. So when you apply the AC signal in the driving electrodes, the induced electrostatic force will then drive the proof mass. The comb drive electrode, as shown here, is used to increase the voltage to force conversion efficiency. The rotation, of the, uh, the rotation in the Z axis is sensed through the proof mass along the Y axis using parallel plate structure to improve the sensitivity. For accurate sensing, we need to further increase the signal strength and reduce the sensor noise. So both the drive and the sense channels are operated at resonance. Operating at a high Q region can increase the mechanical movement of the proof mass and hence the sensed capacitance change. This can also reduce the noise floor to a very low level, say to, in, in this case, tens to the tens of centifarad per square root of hertz. Of course, this noise coming from the uh, interface circuit should also be minimized to achieve this noise level. Another major noise source is actually coming from the bias, which is essentially the sensor offset at uh, zero inputs. The problem of this bias is that it will drift over time and operating condition. As it is inversely proportional to the Q of the sensor, an open up sense channel can relax the Q reduction due to the force feedback. So we have a trade off here. If you want no noise, operating the sense channel in open loop, as in this case, 
can result in a low bias drift in the order of 0.15 degree per hour. But then you will sacrifice the operation bandwidth. As another example, these were targets on humidity sensing for RFID applications. Due to the RFID cost consideration, the form factor should be as small as possible. The limited energy budget is also a major concern. Therefore, high efficiency sensing is necessary. In this work, interdigitated fingers covered by a polymer film on the chip surface is employed so that it can achieve a high sensitivity of 70 antifarad per 0.05% humidity change. This polyimide film is sensitive to water vapor and its dielectric constant can be modulated upon humidity change with high linearity. So we need a very large sensor area to improve the sensitivity. But this will also incur a very large sensor offset which can sacrifice the energy efficiency of the readout stage. In this work, this offset is compensated prior to the sensor interface to relax the dynamic range and resolution requirements of the sensor interface. This leads to an energy per measurement of only 8.3 nanojoule. This work targets on in intracranial pressure monitoring using a customized system. Due to the limited implantable space, the system thickness is limited to only hundreds of micrometers. This is resolved by the MEMS and CMOS co-integration approach. The diffraction of the membrane upon pressure uh, difference at the lower and upper, upper cavity will induce a capacitance change which is sensed by the CMOS chip below. The sensing accuracy in the order of plus or minus 2 mmHg is set by the AAMI standard. The sensor should have a high sensitivity, so the area of the sensor should be large, but its dimensions should almost also be restricted or the membrane right, may mechanically collapse and touch the chip, chip surface. The high sensitivity and relaxed resolution requirement leads to an energy consumption of roughly two nanojoule per sample. Nowadays, screens in cell phones are typically very thin, right? say in the order of few millimeter. And when you apply a protective layer on top of, the, of your touch screen, you are further reducing the capacitive signal generated at the touch panel. So you are expecting a capacitive sensing accuracy in the order of subfantal farad. As the display is placed below this touch screen, you are also driving the parasitics to the display. This increases the power consumption of the driver chipset. Also, the large coupling capacitance between the uh, touch screen and the display can also introduce a very large display noise, which can be a major noise source that limits the achievable SNR. To increase the SNR, you can increase the driver amplitude at the TX channel at the expense of course power consumption. You can also use parallel multi-channel driving with orthogonal coax so that the SNL can be increased by the square root of the number of channels as used in this work. So in order to improve the energy efficiency, this work uh, introduces a stepwise charging driver so that the capacitance can be driven in a stepwise manner to reduce the energy loss. For the RX channels, the mutual capacitance change is sensed in the charge domain it is then first amplified by the differential charge amplifier, followed by the mixer to down converge the modulated capacitance signal to the baseband. This signal is then low pass filtered to remove the out of band noise 
and quantize using the ADC. This bandpass filter can also prevent the out of band noise from being folded back into the signal band during the down conversion process. Using all these mentioned techniques, the achieved capacitance resolution is 66 antifarad with a figure of merit of 350 picojoule per step. And this work targets on a miniaturized bacteria coupled accounting platform using a, the top plate metals. The sensor size is comparable to that of the bacteria to increase the sensitivity and hence the detection limit. The capacitance across the electrodes can vary in the presence of a bacteria in the electrolyte. A sensor array is employed to increase the specificity. The introduced fixed pattern noise in the array among the electrodes can be tackled using correlated subsample sampling in the retail stage. The conductivity of the electrolyte as represented by the resistance here can also reduce the sensitivity as it can discharge the sensing capacitance. So the operating frequency of the readout circuit should be high enough to minimize such effect. The capacitance signal in the presence of bacteria can still be very small, say in the order of subventile ferret. So in this work, it employs a column level amplifier with an exponential gain to achieve a sensitivity of 55 millivolt per femtal variant. The input range here is externally tunable to improve the system flexibility and adapt to different experimental setup. And the achieved detection limit in this work is 450 atofarad, which is roughly seven bacteria. As a summary, we can see that the system requirements for capacitive sensing can vary from implementation to implementation. However, many of them require compact, low power, and high SNL applications. The target capacitance resolution can be down to antifarad due to the small sensing structure, and the sensing energy can be in the order of nanojoule per measurement in energy-aware systems. The capacitive sensor interface should then be designed to fulfill such challenging requirements. Now, let's take a look at the transduction mechanism of capacitive sensors. The physical parameters are transduced into a capacitance change, either by modulating the electrode distance or the dielectric constant between the electrodes. This slide summarizes the basic transduction mechanism of motion-induced capacitive sensors, which can be classified as parallel plate or the comb structure. For the parallel plate, as the capacitance change is proportional to the, to the, to the uh, overlap area, it can achieve a very high sensing accurate sensitivity. However, in the X direction, the requirement of a small separation between the electrodes can limit the travel range. Also, the capacitance change is nonlinear to the electrode movement in the X direction, and typically more calibration effort is required to achieve high sanguine accuracy. For the comb structure, it depends on the mutual capacitance of interdigitated fingers. And typically, it exhibits a lower sensitivity. But this can be traded off with an increased number of fingers, as shown in the increase in number of N here. As you can see, it can achieve a relatively linear response with respect to motion, making it an excellent candidate for high accuracy sensing applications. For the travel range, it varies depending on the direction of motion. In the X direction, the gap closing property can limit the travel distance. But for the L direction here, as the capacitance change is due to the area of the overlap sidewall, 
the travel distance can be larger. So after the, we have this capacitance change, we need to translate this change into an electrical form, which is typically achieved using a capacitive bridge as shown here. Depending on the sensor type, we can either use the single-ended version or the differential version. As you can see in these equations, the SNR of both readouts can be increased by either increasing the signal strength with a higher excitation voltage or increasing the signal delta CS. This rebreath is typically limited by the voltage tolerance of the chosen process for the readout interface, while delta CS is typically dependent on the sensor design. We also have the baseline capacitance here, or the offset capacitance, which is the sensor capacitance without any input signal. Typically, C0 can be very large when compared with delta CS, which can reduce the signal to noise ratio. And in some applications, we also need to consider the driving frequency for SNL improvement. As an example, we should drive the sensing structure at mechanical resonance for noise reduction. Another example is to operate the sensing system at a frequency band away from the external interference, like the 50 or 60 Hz light frequency. Notice that the baseline capacitance C0 actually present in all physical permissive sensors. It is heavily dependent on the sensor structure and the fabrication technology, and this can be also be a major performance limitation to the sensing system in terms of energy consumption, noise, dynamic range, and linearity. The detectable uh, sensor signal, delta CS, is essentially limited by the interface input range. We can define the parameter alpha here, which is the ratio between delta CS and C0. Using a capacitive bridge, we can see that typically alpha is less than one for single-ended interface and less than two for differential ones. Right. As you can see in this plot, the value of alpha here actually varies from application to application. Right. But generally, a larger alpha represents a wider usable sensing range which can typically increase the energy efficiency of the sensor interface. Also, switch capacitor inf interfaces is widely employed for capacitive sensing due to its charge processing property with low power consumption. Apart from the baseline capacitance, another non-ideality is that all physical capacitive sensors suffer from parasitics which can result from either the sensor structure, the bond wires, layout tracks, etc., etc. This can become a major challenge if the parasitic dominates over the sensing capacitance, which can reduce the input signal and increase the KTC noise, like the case for remote sensing. Due to mismatch, the parasitics can also introduce nonlinearity and should be taken care of to ensure the sensing accuracy. Now we move to the discussion of the sensor readout. We can typically classify them into two types, direct conversion and indirect conversion. This slide shows the indirect conversion approach. And in this architecture, the sensor signal is first converted into an electrical one with a capacitive bridge. It can be converted into a voltage as shown here, but can also be other quantities like a current or a frequency, depending on the actual implementation. It is then amplified and then low pass filtered to cut off the wideband noise and then followed by an ADC. This is called the indirect approach because the sensor is independent of the readout circuitry 
It also requires multi-stage signal processing, which inevitably requiring more hardware resources. But one advantage is that each stage can be, can be individually optimized according to the system requirements. For a direct conversion approach, it involves both the sensor and the reference capacitor during the analog to digital conversion stage. One advantage of direct conversion is that as the signal from the sensor is in the charge domain, we can take advantage of this intrinsic property for the subsequent analog to digital conversion, like charge balancing in Delta Sigma or charge redistribution in SAR ADC. The circuit shown here is the charge balancing based Delta Sigma capacitive sensor interface. Essentially, the charge supplied by the sensor capacitor is balanced by that supplied by the reference capacitor so that the accumulated charge is in the, in the integrator is balanced uh, over time. The status of the integrator is monitored by the comparator, which produces a bitstream BS to control the reference capacitor. This slide summarizes the advantages and disadvantages for both indirect and direct conversion approach. In terms of indirect conversion, as the readout front end is composed of different building blocks, each of them can be individually optimized and can be an advantage in terms of implementation flexibility. However, the multiple functional building blocks can increase the system size and cost. For direct conversion, it can achieve direct resometric readout with efficient hardware utilization. However, as the sensor is involved during the AD conversion, the sensor offset and parasitic capacitances can compromise the energy efficiency. Also, as the sensor is directly used for analog to digital conversion, explicit anti-aliasing may not be possible. And therefore, extra filtering effort in the, in the digital domain is typically required. So in the full length tutorial, we will introduce that capacitive sensor interface performance is fundamentally limited by both the non identities of capacitive sensors and also the readout circuits. We will also introduce dynamic noise mitigation techniques, which can eliminate one of the F noise so that the overall noise floor is dominated by the thermal noise. We will also talk about the energy bound for OTA-based capacitive sensor readout, which is fundamentally limited by the sensor offset and parasitics, as well as the energy requirements for subsequent quantization. Finally, we will talk about effective circuit techniques to improve the overall sensing system efficiency. So this slide shows the past conf agile tutorials, the past ISSC tutorials, and the SSCS member benefits. Thank you.